you know, the United States is based on the understanding um, that the rights that the government cares about are what we call civil rights, the right to vote, my right to speak to you. What they have always said is they don't enforce or believe in economic rights or the rights of people to human dignity, to a good job, to a good home, to good health care. Um, and so they don't look at those as important rights. But in fact, of course, the most important human right uh, is the right to live in dignity where you can raise your children, where you can have a home, um, but the United States doesn't believe in that. So what this model has done of free trade is it's destroyed not just the economies of other countries like Guatemala and Mexico, but it's also destroyed the societies and the culture of those countries. Because you go to villages now in Mexico, and instead of being a hundred men in those villages, there's 20 men, because the other ones can only make a living, and a bad living, if they come and leave their families and really destroy their indigenous communities in those countries. So these free trade agreements, I think, are at the heart of poverty around the world. It's an interesting question because we look at crimes as when we see our governments carry out torture or illegal bombings, and they're the ones that happen immediately. Um, but the ones that happen through these broad economic policies that kill many more people, many more than our wars kill, um, somehow the world is willing to look away. But in fact, those are the re remarkable and important crimes against humanity to recognize. Because only when we recognize that impoverishing people, causing death through hunger, um, through the increased uh, destruction of villages, uh, through the slavery that ensues, uh, through the murders that happen when people cross the border. You know, when you cross the border to the United States, you know, hundreds of people die doing that in the desert. Um, so that is the crime that we ought to be talking about much more. And I think only if we look at it as a crime, as a crime against humanity, because it's massive, it's intentional, uh, people... And systematic. Systematic, we know about it. Um, and, it, and it's not, and they don't stop it. They keep doing it the next time and the next time that maybe if people recognize it as a crime, can we begin to finally say, you have to stop doing this. I mean, I think the American dream exists as a dream. When people get here, it's a nightmare for thousands, perhaps millions of them. The reason I think they still come is because the economic policies of this giant in the North have so impoverished the rest of the world, and particularly, of course, South America and Central America, um, that they think that it might be better. But when you talk to people, most of them want to go back to their families and their culture in their own countries. Uh, the, immigration, uh, the immigration policy of the United States is now being, uh, there is now an attempt to try and legalize the status of 11 million people in the United States, uh, or their, their immigration status. Um, there's a lot of resistance, but it's the first time we're seeing a little bit of a shift um, because we now have a huge number of Hispanics living in the United States, and they vote, and the Republicans who are holding this up now realize that they don't have a chance unless they begin to work for immigration. Uh, but the United States, to be honest, has always considered itself this white country. And the idea that this country will in 20 years or 30 years be a majority Hispanic and African American, I think people are racist um, and they don't want to see it. Um, they give a lot of other reasons, um, but in fact I think what's going on is the whole image of this country is changing um, and people are resisting it.